today what we're going to talk about is laying a foundation for success and where that comes from is partially from the assignments that we design for our students. Like laying the foundation for a house, a foundation for learning the assignments not only um, need to be rock solid so that learning will not collapse as you're scaffolding it for your students. The purpose of this workshop is to help you design and construct assignments that lay a foundation for your students' learning objectives. After this session, my objectives for you are to be able to one, apply strategies for creating authentic assignments for your students, two, create assignments and assignment sheets that clearly communicate all aspects of that given assignment for your students. Three, minimize your students' time and frustration as they complete the assignments that you give them. And four, scaffold assignments so that your students can succeed. The reason that the design of assignment sheets is important is one, assignment sheets and rubrics help demonstrate mastery and proficiency for a specific set of skills, concepts, or standards which your students have to master. Two, it helps a given pro professor, me or you, remember the specifics in that given assignment, its objectives, and what that assessment is. Three, we know from research that students consistently review assignment sheets while they're writing or completing their assignments. So they work on the assignment, they go back, they look at your assignment sheet. They work on the assignment, they go back and look at your assignment sheet. So it's critically important that everything you put in there is accurate for them. Uh, this, it also, a solid assignment sheet will establish consistency between all the various times the course may be taught by different professors. And finally, it helps establish consistency within a program because if your assignment sheet is, holds together well with its objectives, then the sequence of skill and knowledge for your students in a given program is scaffolded through. I want to show you some examples and just get a gut visual response here. So this first one that I'm going to pull up for you is an example of a assignment sheet. And by the way, these two assignment sheets that you're going to look at have all the very same information. I just want you to look at the content difference or the visual difference. So you look at this assignment sheet, yep, got all the information, but it's all text. And so for a student, it's a little bit more difficult to find information and it can feel a little bit more daunting. So that's example A. Now we look at example B, again, the very same information, but how is it different visually? Visually, the difference is that you have specific categories outlined for your students. Visually, you have numbered points within those categories. And visually, all the sentences are very short and, and uh, concise. That helps your student gather information when a student is following directions. Because when a student is following directions, any of us really are following directions, we work better if we have numbered points and if we have short sentences so we can go back and say, look at that, okay, I did that. Did I do this? Yes, I did that. And that's more difficult to do if we're operating in paragraph form. So as a student, we have to look at it from our student's perspective, which is easier to complete for us. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to move to is when you design assignments, what's the process that you walk through for, for designing assignments? The first thing is we follow what's called backwards design. So instead of saying, this is the assignment I'm going to do for my students, we start with, what are my objectives? What do I want my students to accomplish with this given assignment? Then the second thing I think about is, okay, here are my objectives. How do I authentically create something that I can assess that they met those objectives? Not give them something to do, but authentically assess that they really learned the concepts I wanted them to learn. The next thing I worry about is, what's my visual presentation? Do I have the information Present it in a way visually so that my students can quickly reference information, find information, and grasp what they need to have. And then finally, what's the content that needs to be in that assignment sheet so they can have all of the tools that they need at their disposal to complete the assignment successfully. So I'm going to give you an example of an assignment sheet that I created a few years ago. The class I was teaching was Content Area Literacy, which is a required class for all students who are 5'12 and K-12 majors in the Masters of Arts and Teaching program. 
At the time that I was designing this assignment, I added a new element and a new concept into the course and the curriculum called academic language. At that moment in time, academic language was a completely new concept. Nobody knew about it, even most education professors didn't know about it. I can remember at the same time doing some presentation locally in the state of Minnesota for education professors because it was so new nobody knew what it was yet. So that meant my students are walking in with absolutely no background knowledge whatsoever. No background knowledge, no concept, no context for the concept I was teaching them. Secondly, I knew that when they went in the field, that their, the cooperating teachers they worked with would not have any background knowledge either. And I also knew what was happening with state standards. They have to have this, they have to master this concept because it would soon be a requirement for them to succeed in their student teaching. So it's critically important, but they had no background knowledge. So my thought was, how can I get these concepts across to them? What can I do? So my first thought is, okay, I can have them write an essay. That's kind of what, that's our default mode, have them do a writing assignment. But then I thought, you know, that's kind of boring. And I'm not sure I can really know in the writing assignment that they get the objectives that I really want them to meet. So I thought, all right, what else could I do to know that they can get these exact objectives. And I thought, okay, what I think may work the best for these students is I will have them watch on YouTube somebody teach, and then in that process of watching them teach, have here are the specific examples of academic language, and can you pull them out of the video that you're watching? So that's what I did. So I'm gonna pull up and let you look at the assignment sheet that I did for them. Actually, not the assignment sheet, something else. So I gave them options to learn academic language. And one of the options that I gave them was to do a graphic organizer. So for this graphic organizer, on one hand, I have all the various key elements of academic language. And then I have some examples that they can fill in the blank, so to speak, as they're watching this video. The second thing that I came up with is called a triple entry journal. The way that the triple entry journal operates is you start with here is what the research says about this particular topic. Here is what I observed about this topic and then you write a reflection on that. When I did my observation, this is what I think about it. This is where maybe they were this, the research matched what I watched or the research is different than I watched or this is how they were like and this is how they were different. So that's what you do in a triple entry journal. Three sections, research, what I observed, my reflection upon that. And because I like giving students choice, I also gave them the choice of writing a writing assignment. So they really had three objectives, three types of assignments they could do to meet the objective. One was a graph, two was a triple entry journal, and three was a standard writing assignment. They had to choose two out of the three. Okay? So what I found out when we were doing the academic language assignment is that of those three items, the one that worked by far the best was the graphic organizer. Because when I had that graphic organizer, immediately I knew which students got which concepts. And then with the triple entry journal, what I found out very quickly was they picked about four concepts and then I knew, all right, this is the depth level with, with which they could understand those concepts. And ironically, the writing assignment didn't tell me squat. So when I looked at that writing assignment that the students created, I didn't know whether or not they got the objectives. So that told me a lot about what was the best type of assignment to give my students. Now another piece of helping your students succeed in this assignment is scaffolding them toward knowing what to do in the assignment. So that the way that this particular assignment was scaffolded is step number one, explain the concept to the class, which is part lecture, part discussion, part outside reading, okay? And then do some activities in class to play with it. Their assignment, in short, was to watch a video of a teacher teaching and pull out examples of academic language, whether they discuss that in the graph, triple entry journal, or in the essay. So we also did that whole class. So as a whole class, after we did the discussion and um, they had some lecture and background information, then what we did is we watched a video as a class and as a class, we pulled it apart and analyzed it so that they knew what the academic language elements were in that particular video. Then they did it independently. So that's how they were scaffolded to know that they could actually succeed on this particular assignment, okay? Now, 
Um, as I'm walking through that process, my questions to myself were, what do I want them to demonstrate that they know? And in this case, and I'm going to go back to the assignment sheet where I've got the purpose, I wanted them to be able to analyze an application of academic language. I wanted them to be able to find patterns in someone's teaching of academic language. And I wanted them to be able to deepen their knowledge and breadth of academic language so they know what it looks like. So they're better prepared when they go out into the classroom. So the next thing that I'm looking at is, what is the time involved in completing an assignment? And is this appropriate for the knowledge and skills that I want them to have? Of those three options on an assignment, what I found out is the graphic organizer was the fastest, and that told me for them to complete, fastest for me to grade, it also gave me the best information and insight into what their learning was. The second one on the triple entry journal, that showed me the depth of their knowledge, and the third one, again, the essay didn't tell me a lot because, quite frankly, they could sort of BS on that one. And they could, they could dodge the things that they didn't know. So they could tell me what they did know, but I couldn't discover what they didn't know when I looked at the essay. Okay? Now, um, again, what was the time involved? The essay took them about an hour and a half. The um, uh, triple entry journal took them about 45 minutes. And the graph took them about 30 minutes. So the item that gave actually the best results was also the fastest item for me to do. Now, the next question I had to ask myself when I'm designing these assignments is, do my students have the skills to successfully complete the assignment? And quite honestly, and I taught this several times, they got it about at 75 to 80 percent. I scaffold them toward the skills, and then what happened is, when they did the assignment, I immediately knew what they got, what they didn't get, but my response to them was, all right, you four students, you need to get these concepts. You three, you need these concepts. You four, you need these concepts. So then what I did is after I got the assignments back and assessed them, then I went back and retaught the concepts that they didn't have. I was in a face-to-face -face class, and that's how I met with them later, is face-to-face -face with small groups over the specific concepts they didn't get. However, in an online environment, you could do something similar. The difference is you can show them a video of here are the things that you can pull out with academic language they didn't get and then have them repeat the assignment on a different, uh, on a different video and a different example of teaching so that you can know, do they have it now? And typically by the second teaching, the second time through, everyone got all the pieces of the assignment. Okay. The next thing to ask yourself is, will models of the assignment better enable my students to successfully complete the assignment? And in this particular case, I really couldn't use models. And the reason I couldn't use models is it'd be too easy to cheat. So in this case, instead of giving them models to look at, what worked out better was for me to model it with them and do an example with them. And that's something you have to weigh out as a teacher. When I teach writing classes, I typically gave them models to look at, and that was helpful. In this particular assignment, it was not as helpful. Okay? Next thing, does the assignment include choice? Adult learners like choice. Anytime you can embed choice into an assignment, they like that and they appreciate it. In this case, they had to do two out of three choices. And finally, how can I and do I scaffold the assignment so my students can succeed? And I've explained that a few times about how I scaffolded the, scaffolded the assignments for them. All right. So now what we've talked about is the thought process and how you think through how to design an assignment that authentically gets at the objectives that you have for students to meet. The next thing we have to look at is, here's what the assignment is, but the next piece is, all right, how do I tell them what they're supposed to do? How do I tell them what that assignment is? And it's both visual and it's content. Visually, I'm going to pull this up here. If you see, I did the same thing that I showed you a little before. So you have the title, you have subheads, you ha and I have um, points under the subheads, and then subpoints under those. So they have specific things to look at on what their assignment is and what they are supposed to do. Okay. Now, the second thing is, so those are the, the visual parts of, a, of an assignment. Categories are listed. Items within categories are numbered or letters short sentences, and to reduce structural stress, however you set up this assignment, however it looks visually, 
it's a good idea if it parallels or mirrors the other assignments that you do within the class. Okay? Now, the next thing is, what content do you put into an assignment sheet? Some of that will be similar across programs and some of that is different. One of the things you always want to add an assignment sheet is, what's the purpose? Why are you giving them this assignment sheet? Sometimes that's the objective and sometimes it's a little different than objectives. This is why you need to know this information. It's the best motivator for students to get to them to do things is to realize this is why it's valuable. This is how you use this tomorrow professionally or personally or depending on what your objectives are. So this started with these, this is the purpose. Then the next thing is for this particular assignment, here are your specific directions. This is exactly what you have to submit and here is an explanation of the types of things you can do, other points, and then a rubric. And those other points include what the due dates are for the assignment. Okay? So purpose, objectives, description of text. Another important thing is what's the formatting of the text that you want them to give you? What are the requirements for the text? Does it have an intro paragraph? Do you fill in a graph? Those types of things. Due dates, submissions need to be in there. What's the port what are the what's the point value for the text, and what are the penalties for late work. And the, another good th thing that helps you as a classroom teacher is to put at the top your name on it and the date that you created the text, the assignment. The reason the date's important is you may go back later and say, oh, I haven't redone that assignment for three years. Maybe I need to look at it again. Is it still relevant? Do I need to make changes? Or, yeah, I redid that last year, so it's still in good shape. Or shoot, I've got two versions of this, which is the most recent. Then you can look at it and say, ah, this is the most recent. This is the one I need to use. So that's the content that's valuable for you to use on the assignment. Okay? Um, the other thing you want to do is look at and see, is my assignment consistent with the rubric that I'm creating for it? So does my rubric that follows the assessment piece, does it also match everything that is in my assignment? We are not going to spend time on the rubric in this workshop because of, we just don't have the time. But then a companion, a companion workshop for rubrics will be available to you too. Okay. So as you look at this, you can see how all the elements are there which explain to the students how to succeed in a given assignment. Now understand also this may vary assignment to assignment. This is for academic language. This is an example of a standard writing assignment in a freshman comp class. The categories are a little different. It adds to it what the genre is, the purpose, formatting, uh, text parameters, and so forth. So those are the key elements that you need to include when you're setting up an assignment sheet for your students and, and establishing the assignment. Okay? Now, finally, what were the objectives of this session. What did I want you to walk away with when you leave this, this session? As I told you, I want you to, one, be able to apply strategies for designing an assignment sheet and assessment for your students. I want you to create assignments, know how to create assignments and assessment sheets which authentically assess the uh, objectives that you want your students to meet. I want you to set up assignments that can minimize your students' structural stress and frustrations and scaffold them in a way that your students can succeed on the assignments. You are the one who will determine now whether or not this workshop actually helped you. The last thing that I want to close with is from Luke 6, 48 and 49. He is like a man building a house who dug down deep and laid the foundation on a rock. When a flood came, the torrent struck that house, but could not shake it because it was well built. But the one who heard my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck the house, it collapsed and its destruction was complete. So hopefully you will be building strong course assignments on a foundation that allows your students to succeed even though they will get frustrated in the process or may get frustrated in the process of building it.